just just got back from from 2019, arrived at 2020, and and uh, here I am. I'm 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 ready for this year. Ready to kick some ass and take some names. How about you, Matthew? Ryan McGee. I I am so ready to Matthew kick some ass Watson. and take some names. Uh, well, one of my New Year's resolutions is to only refer to you by your full name. Yeah. Ryan McGee. Hey, what's up, Ryan McGee? Nothing much, man. Yeah, man. We are back. We took a little uh. I had a little break, a little breaky break, like we do every year around uh, the end of Christmas and the beginning of the New Year. So and yet can, people uh, still remain confused, even though we've done this for like four or five years in a row now. We always take a break. Relax. Everything is fine. Um, we just like to, you know, you know how some YouTubers will be like, I'm taking a break from social media or like, man, this this YouTube Gabe's getting on me. I, I might have to quit. And they'll post like a very like, oh, click this video. Do I quit? Am I quitting YouTube? Well, for us, it's just like, let's just take a two week break, two, yeah. three week <laughs> break. And um, then so that that gets us all recharged. We get to see friends and family. We get to kind of rest a little bit, yes. plan a little more for what's coming in 2020. Yeah. And uh, mo- mostly plan for things that we get to over promise that's that's mainly what what are we going to over promise for 2020 yeah let's let's list all the promises and then do about two of them yeah um but yeah guys uh i hope i hope everyone had a good holiday break i hope everyone's new year was good no i did yeah had some delicious food got to see some delicious family and friends Ooh, yeah you saw you see the old the old mom and pop Ooh, all four of them nice dude nice i i went to uh hawaii with my family uh but not all of them <laughs> well, not my dad, but I did go with uh, my mom and my sister, and uh, her husband, and I had a, I had a very delightful time. I've never been anywhere like that, uh, and it's something that we had been planning for. Like you've never well been to a, a tropical year. location before? No, not like that. No, I've never been to like a tropical. Why? Well, I went to Jamaica when I was in like middle school or early high school on a mission trip with my church. Yeah, uh, but it, we didn't go to like the resorts and stuff like that. Nice type of we went to like the middle of the country where okay. it's just kind of run down. Um, so I'd never been to like a fancy tropical place like Hawaii. Um, and it was beautiful because me we we've been playing this for like well over a year. It's something we've always wanted to do. Uh, so we did it. Very very fun. Went to Maui. Uh, I got Mauied while I was there. So i no. Did longer... you get laid? Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, you know, you know, yeah. Yeah, you know, but it, it was, was it was uh it was it was really really fun. That's very good. very pretty. Saw a lot of whales. Like just look out the window of my Airbnb and just Have see, you like, been whales. to Wales? No, not the country, no. Mm. Apparently we should I, go. I have some lineage that goes back there apparently. Obviously. According to a cousin, but uh uh-huh. no, I I've never been to Wales. Super Mega does Wales. Let's do that as our next travel series. Like, they did Japan. What are they going to do next? And then we go to Wales. I don't know what we're going to do next, bro. Yeah, we don't either. We, uh, we're we trying to figure that out, though. So, uh, Ryan. I mean, it's pretty simple. It's a pretty simple plan. Live action, games, podcasts. Hell yeah, baby. Going solid for another year. Yeah, I was thinking this year. This is the year of the half-assed podcast. So uh, uh, all podcasts from now on will be about 30 minutes at most. Okay. I j- I'm just kind of like in that mood. Let's do it. I'm I'm down for that, man. We, yeah, we do have some. Uh, That's a joke. That's how we started the podcast, though. No, Anywhere yeah, between, I, I, like, I forgot about that. I go back thirty to forty five like, minutes. There's episodes that aren't even thirty minutes of the podcast. I think the airport episode that we recorded just like last year was twenty six minutes. There's some early ones where we were like, yeah, twenty seven minutes is good for a podcast. Why not? Uh, it's 27 it. minutes of talking. That's perfect. Look, I go on JRE clips, and if there's a clip that's that's a half an hour, I, I'm down. I'm, I'm I'm down to clown with some Joe Rogan. Yeah? Yeah. You want to get him on the podcast? He'd never come on. Why? He doesn't like doing other people's stuff, I don't think. What a selfish prick. No, I, <laughs> well, I guess a busy prick. Yeah. Well, he's not a... He just looks like a penis. He he's not he's he may he not be an asshole. He's very looking. He does kind of look He like looks a like penis. a chode. Yeah, he looks like a like a, a dick that's been he, beaten a lot. He looks like a short erect penis. <laughs> it really is a good like just in the energy about him too. <laughs> yeah. That kind of like short erect penis vibe. Yeah. Uh like like a solid when erect four, three and a half, four inches, kind of a little bit thick. It's kind of thick uh and it's it's swollen with blood. It's erect. But who would have thought, you know, back when you're watching uh, Fear Factor, who would have thought this man is going to be the head of podcasting? Like the most successful podcast host in yeah, the world. Yeah, he's essentially like, I'm not going to say he's the new whatever, but 
he feels like he's kind of like the what Howard Stern is to radio is what Joe Rogan is to podcasting. That's a good way to, and it makes sense yeah, when you look at the two. Joe Rogan doesn't have a, his own Beetlejuice though. No, he has Jamie. No, that's not that's not the same thing, man. Beetlejuice is one of a kind. Andrew Andrew Yang, did he go on Joe Rogan? I feel like he no, he went on, he went on H- H3's he, podcast. He did. Um, God, why why the fuck though? Would he go on H3's podcast? Publicity? Yeah, but like when when you're did trying we, to have a when, younger audience, when probably? you're trying to have a serious political discussion, do you think yeah is the is the way to go? <laughs> Like, I, I you think Mister Klein is 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 a good proponent to help you boast, like boast and uh, like offer up your political views. Well, I guess it would expose it to a a, a different demographic that's not going <laughs> to be watching the debates and stuff. I guess. I mean, I don't see Bernard Sanders going on the H three well, podcast. Bernie Sanders went on Joe Rogan, so he doesn't need to go on H three H three's podcast. Yet. Bernie Sanders did go on a Mister Rogan's podcast. Uh, but God, actually, like so much. So much stuff has happened since the last episode of this podcast, like in terms of world news and in terms of just like us. Yeah, in terms of my colon. Yes. Oh, people, so people have been wondering. The news. Oh, by the way, I just got off of the phone. Um, this is the dumbest thing I have. It's like the medical system is trying to leech and make like people owe them money for eternity. No way. I know. So get, get this. You know how I said I paid thirteen hundred dollars at at the hospital. Yeah. You think that would be done, right? Mm-hmm. I get it uh, today. I I go I go and I'm like I'm thinking about it. I call the, back the hospital. I'm like, are there any outstanding payments I need to pay back? Guess what, Matt? What? There there is a thousand more dollars worth of medical bills I had to pay. What? You know why? Because they said. Oh, that was just an estimate, but yeah, this is what it actually turned out to be. And then you know, and I'm like, okay. So we're all good. He's like, well, you're good with the hospital. And I'm like, what does that mean? Well, you know, radiologists and the doctors will might sometimes bill you separately. I'm like, what the fuck? Put it all on one goddamn bill. You work in the fucking hospital. Put it all on one bill. You're trying to do this so people don't see that they have a payment. So then they have to go into debt. They have to do that on purpose. Oh, yeah, yeah, of course. Where it's like, like, uh, like maybe they'll maybe they they won't see this or maybe they won't get it in the mail and then I can uh you know send some debt collectors after them and then b- interest will build up after time and then they'll they'll be indebted to me for life. Well, something similar with phone companies is uh when I got my phone a year ago uh when when I, when I got my little iPhone um I didn't want to have to do the monthly payment thing. I was like you know I'll just pay for it up front. So because you know I didn't want it to like have to end up on my mom's bill because uh my you know i share a phone plan with my mom and sometimes like uh the monthly payments will end up on her and then like i'll just forget to pay it so i was like i'll just pay for it up front so she doesn't have to do that so i paid for the full thing up front but they uh except for they decided to not put twelve dollars of that without me knowing on so i'm paying one dollar a month or something or like or no 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 50 cents a month for two years. And I'm like, why? I wanted to pay up front, but it's just another way that like, I don't understand. I have no idea why they do that. So and apparently stupid. it's like a thing. So dumb. It's like, why? Why Why do you have me on this 50 cent a month recurring plan? I wanted to, why would I pay the full price of an iPhone minus $12 to pay in like monthly installments? Like, <laughs> 50 you know, cents. Guys, sorry, I'm $12 short of this iPhone. I'll pay it off over two years. It's like, it, it's so they can... Maybe you'll forget about those payments. Mm-hmm. 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 I don't know. And like that, that twelve becomes twenty four, becomes forty eight. But I understand, like the doctors are working through the hospital. But like, why not bill everything under one, like under one? Just put it on one receipt. I guess because it's different independent companies and stuff. Like then the tell me. What what if I don't get it in the mail? What if it gets sent to another address that look like it looks similar to mine in terms of like the numbers they get fucked up? Like like let's say a nine looks like a six. Oh no! You know what I mean? And the well, mailman the sends sends it to the wrong person. Send now I got a debt collector after me that I gotta work with and solve shit with. I had a bill um that I didn't even know I had uh going to the wrong address forever. And I just had no idea. And then it was like tripled in price. And I was like, oh, God damn it. Because a lot of these companies only do it through mail. They won't do email. They won't do phone calls until it's too late. Like, they'll, they'll be like, oh, we're only going to send it through mail. It's like, yep. yeah, but the mail is not super reliable. So I might have to, I might be getting separate bills from, I did two visits to the emergency room. And then I did a visit 
uh, a few vi- uh, I got the colonoscopy. Then nice. they're the regular doctor's visit. So I don't know like who's going to charge me for what, what I'm going to be charged for. I just have to wait and find out. I either I either wait for a bill to show up in the mail, or I wait for a person that calls me. And go, you owe this money. You pay, or you will go to jail. Yeah, that sucks. But that's lame, dude. Regardless, uh, everything seems to be fine. Um, yeah. The the Mister, I'm gonna call him Mister Wizard. Um, my doctor. Uh. Because he worked his magic, let me tell you. You know, every time I visited him, he's he's been eating. Like, he just, like, will be eating, like, a soup or, like, a sandwich. Like, he visited me, he's like, it, it gets my brain working, you know? It, it's it's better for you. And I'm like, okay. I don't need, I, I I don't need that, this. I don't need to smell your brothy breath, though. But yeah, but I don't think that, like, doing the kind of job you're, like, looking up people's assholes would really get you in, like, a... I think he gets him fired up. He's like, "Oh man, I'm hungry after this." Yeah, but Mister Mister Wizard says that it was a said that it was a complex case. Or sorry, sorry, Doctor Wizard said that it was a complex case, um, because the symptoms and stuff that I was experiencing, mucousy bowel movements, nice. blood in the stool, nice, yeah. all of that, you know, <clears throat> consistency has changed and fluctuated very drastically with within a month span. Um, he said that, that that led him to believe it would be either Crohn's or some for some form of uh, chronic colitis. He, looking at the like, uh, I guess numbers and the data from the stool samples that I collected for him, you know, uh, says that I I am uh, I do I do have a predisposition like I. What is it called? I am more prone. I am more prone. I I have the genetic makeup. I it is hereditary. I have the genetic makeup to get C diff, which is a form of colitis. But the tests show that I don't have it. Nice, nice. So he says it looks like something goofy went on, and my body some flushed it out, and now it looks it like a long it could, time it could yeah, it out. It could be gone. But I have to do one more stool sample. Damn, dude, they're um, making you do stool samples. So like I have crazy. to sh- shovel through my doo doo one more time. We would we, we want to do a, a Patreon video of that. Oh no, no man. I mean, we can uncensored. We can show it coming out, <laughs> and then you digging through it. It's like we'll put Minecraft sound effects. If you film it, yeah. You know, yeah. Digging through it, be fun. Yeah, I'd be down. I'll help you with it. I'll, I'll help you dig okay. through it and do all the the shit you need. Okay, to do. I'll hold you to it. Okay. When? Yeah. When? When? Uh, in about a week. Okay. I'm gonna be. I'm gonna take a shit here. I'm gonna give you the little vial and shovel, and I'm gonna watch as you shovel my poop into a vial. Okay. Okay. <laughs> you're like. Okay. You're like. You're just like. It's one of those moments where you're still because you're like, I gotta commit. I, I, yeah. I gotta commit. But like, is he gonna call me out on this? And and. Yeah. At the end of the day, you're not. You don't have. Like, you're a grown man. You can say no to shoveling through your 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 I, well, I your already partner's said yes, shit. Didn't I? You did. So I'm gonna hold you to it, and you've uh, doubled down on it. So it looks like even. I'm doing it, Ryan, and you're not even gonna let. You're not even gonna help. I I want full control over the doo doo. I'm gonna be the one doing it. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna. No, I'm just kidding. That, that's gonna, a joke. That's a joke. I'm like, you need to be there. Okay. Yeah. I mean, no, of I'm course not. I'm not in a room there. alone with your shit, <laughs> with a little set of small tools, and it does it come with gloves. Like, no. Why do they not give you just a pair of like latex gloves with that kid? <laughs> I don't know. It's like of all the things, it's like yeah, use your bare hands uh, with with this whole thing. So FedEx is gonna have my poop in its system again. Once again, I hope this is just a regular thing. So like, at any given moment, it's like yeah, there's probably some of my poop in the FedEx system. Part of me feels like the guy's like yeah, it looked like it was weird, but uh, maybe another stool sample. Uh, it's gonna cost like well, who knows five hundred bucks. <laughs> You know that that that's what I'm expecting. That's why I think he asked me to do it. Well, that's why I want to take some of the pain off you by helping. Yeah. You know? Let's hope Doctor Wizard knows what he's doing. I'm. He probably does, man. But uh, he's, a, he's a doctor. Yeah. I were well. I mean, there's bad doctors too, like look at like Michael, Michael Jackson's doctors doctor. that work for the Mexican cartel. Yeah. Yeah. Those are the, bad doctors. Though those are good. They're great doctors. But they're, but they're bad, bad, doctors. bad doctors. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Like, um. Like waving your wagging your finger bad. Bad doctor. I used to be able to make a sound if I wagged my finger fast enough. You could hear like, like flipping around. I can't really. Jackson opened up this door earlier. Was he trying to say something? He's trying to say that food's here. We'll see you guys in a bit. I'm what? hungry as fuck. Ooh, what a delicious meal. That was good. Those were some good tacos. I am. I am actually feeling. Like way more energetic and, and better now. I didn't have anything in my system. I had nothing in before my system that. except coffee. 
besides like a little cup of water you you graciously got me jesus dude like I, 2020 i i know that we've we've done this conversation on the podcast a million times i need to take care of myself and get healthy because i i'm not treating my body right because dude. literally i'm i don't eat and when i do eat it's not a lot it's not good i don't exercise i don't drink enough water i drink too much alcohol it's just not good i'm trying to get health get a little healthier as well uh, i've been playing that ring fit game I, i'm gonna get it to that that uh jackson got me for christmas i've been playing some just dance i ordered a you didn't get me that for christmas well, sorry buddy <laughs> he got me a, a simpsons bowling shirt so that's even one would argue better but hear that jackson sorry that's one <laughs> but um i I, I also ordered a i i ordered a workout machine Ooh! so ah, dude, we'll i'm see. so excited for you uh, me too i i've because the thing is like if you get if you i like the grind of something like for instance in let's say call of duty you have to grind to get weapon skins in in um in like follows MMOs yeah you, you you have to grind I like grinding I like that I like being able to just to turn off and build something up and have a goal or something like that and Feels so great. that's why I like RuneScape so much because all the all the if RuneScape didn't have all those little like levels like wood cutting fire making fishing cooking like which is why Ring fits good because it's a game and it's good, exercise good. but I'm gonna get it I'm so excited I just know like for me like back because I remember I lost if you remember I lost about 50 pounds at one point during our super mega journey I, I went from 230 to 178 or something like that um, oh my god yeah I remember you were you were below 180 that was your yeah. goal and you did it and right now I am uh, what? last time I got on the scale whew, was 218 so yeah it's not the worst it's been no but I, I definitely want to get back to being about like 170 something 180 something that's a goal but you know i've said that for the past two or so years since i've dropped 50 and then gained it back again it's so really hard, who knows I mean, like also like i think just it's just one of those things like you want to change about yourself but it's it's way harder than it actually seems like you know i would love to gain weight but i just i don't have an appetite it's hard for me to eat and and i sleep so much and i just like I just need to change all this shit. I yeah. need to just like almost completely stop drinking. I need to just like my eat. problem is using food as therapy. Sometimes I'll be in a down mood. I'll be sad and lonely and all that stuff. And then I'll be like, you know what I could do? I could order a big uh, meal of Panda Express. Ooh, I could order Five Guys. Ooh, I could order McDonald's and get cookies and dip the cookies in milk and have a good time. Well, that's the thing is we're opposite that way because my anxiety makes me have no appetite. I cannot eat if I'm anxious. Which I'm not talking about being anxious. I'm talking about being down. Yeah. When you got the downs, yeah. Got the sads sometimes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No. Even when, and when I'm sad, I don't eat either. Like if 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 I'm going through a breakup, like I can go days without eating, or like, and that's so unhealthy. Like I gotta force myself to eat because I'm just not hungry. Um, but here here's here's something interesting. Um, I actually for my age and my height, I am ten pounds underneath the draft. Uh, requirement. So stay that way. Yeah, stay so that I, way. I, so you I, don't have to go to uh, I, I Iran. Go to Iran. Yeah. Do we, do we want to say Iran or Iran? How do we? I like do Iran. You, I like it being pronounced Iran. But so I, I'm pretty sure it's it's the proper way is Iran. But I hear both. I hear Iran. I hear Iran, and I hear I Iran. In Iran. In Iran. It, it's confusing. It's like I just say Iran. I, I say Iran, but then it, Iranian sounds weird. Iranian sounds more <clears> normal. I don't know, dude. Yeah, that that that's that's a big uh, global thing that's been going on since the last episode of the podcast. Yeah, there's there's the whole World War Three meme started just for the new year. Yeah, but uh, first meme uh, of the new decade is like, hey, World War Three. I, I if I were to give any advice to our president, it would be to, what would Jesus do, Donald Trump? What would Jesus do? He'd vote for Trump in twenty twenty. He'd fucking drone those fucking bastards to oblivion. <laughs> If if Jesus had access to drones, he would have done it too. <laughs> no, yeah, and then the fucking plane crash in Iran, like right after. Which rumor has it, uh, people, uh, I guess Canada and the U.S. are saying that it was Iran shot down, shot yeah. down by Iran, civilians yeah. killed by Iran. A lot, a lot of people died. Canadian, no, no, no U.S. civilians. So I don't really care. No, but a lot of people have. Don't we still have a civilian in China or something Probably. in prison? 
I, I wouldn't be surprised. I'm sure we have a few of our. We have a few. Probably North, North Korea as well. Yeah. Um, probably in the basement of the Super Megaplex too. We haven't. Oh, we have not checked that in a while. Let me get this straight though. Iran, allies, China, Russia, right? North Korea. North Korea. But if we're talking about people who are going to supply decent support, even though to I to Iran it would be China and Russia, right? Yeah, I think so. And we're talking about under the under the table, like here's some guns, here's some explosives, here's some tech. Go wreak some havoc. Give them hell, kid. Go 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 have some fun. Go destabilize the West. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, but I I, I genuinely that's the Chinese wonder. president. Xi Jinping. <laughs> yeah, that was him. Go, go have fun. Just, just go, go play just, outside. Just destabilize them. That's all we just need. Just go destabilize them. I mean, they already got Trump on their side. They're yeah, they're, 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 they're fragmented already. Well, we have God on our side. We have Jesus Christ. Well, I wonder if like we are going to go to war with Iran because we're pretty close right now. And there's been a lot of scares in the past, you know, growing up with a lot of different countries. Like, remember last year, there was the whole, it was like, oh, are we going to go to war with North Korea? And then that fizzled out. But like, yeah, but like, here's the thing. Action what would have been taken with this? Yeah, action has been taken. But at right now, I feel like it's it's simmering down. Yeah. You know, they, they did their whole, see, Iran, they did their whole kind of like, we're going to give you six hours to evacuate the places that we're going to strike. We're going to give you notice and then we're going to hit those places and then we're going to back off. That's what they did. Yeah. As retaliation. Yeah. And then Trump, what was like all is well. I have that famous tweet that people are talking about. Blah blah all blah. All is well. But the the thing that is um a bit disconcerting is that um regardless of whether you know we know that the branches of government hold the president back from doing anything um, too malicious and in intent to another country at this point, um, in terms of like starting a war you know we you know he has the right to send i forget the amount of troops that the president can send of off the bat um but, i mean he can do stuff like that but i uh, the thing that uh, i'm a little worried about is the rhetoric that donald trump spreads to other countries and then they can use that as propaganda against the united states in terms of us for example committing war crimes by attacking places that are like cultural sites yeah, cor yeah cultural sites i know that's a big one that people are talking about but it's still just kind of like I mean, th threats are threats, and I get that. He's he's talking a big game because he's used to doing that and, you know, playing ball in New but York. Threat threatening but... something, like, completely illegal and, like, yeah. a, a, like an international war crime. I mean, if if there's... If there's any history book in the future that would be like who who was, who was on the wrong side, it would be the country who was threatening to, I don't know, commit war crimes. Yeah. So... Uh, the United States, even though we have our allies and we're very powerful, we're, we're not more powerful than two of the biggest... Pa uh, uh, world powers combined, which yeah, would be Russia China and China Russia. Got together. So there, oh. there's there's no there's no and I mean that's what would happen. Yeah. We're not we're not gonna. <laughs> I mean who's gonna who's gonna join our side out of them? They're they're gonna go against us. Uh, you know what I realized we're we, we're Russia's biggest enemy essentially, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know what I realized? What we haven't even since the last podcast that we haven't touched on is that he got impeached. He did get impeached, he, but it doesn't matter. From office, but impeached. Yeah, there's all these... They, they put that MF in a peach. I think Donald Trump definitely has created this thing where Democrats and Republicans on both sides don't know how to play the game right now. We're still figuring out. Like when, What I mean by that is, you know when the internet first came around, people were figuring it out in terms of like uh, websites and uh, putting videos online and yeah. sharing stuff yeah. and uh, social media to a certain extent. Um, people are figuring out and then they get accustomed to it and then people, you know, there's a, there's a strategic, not a strategic, but there's a way to go about using the internet now. There's yeah. just kind of like the normal way yeah, yeah. people do it. Um, so I think, I think that right now we're in this political climate that hasn't really been touched upon it's never happened yet. Like and this. so people are kind of like testing it out and yeah, he was, uh, impeached, but at the same time we have a Senate that is majority right leaning. Um, which which is the way it should be, um, not in terms of them being right leaning, but in terms of there being not a fully democratic government, not a fully Republican government. Um, but right now, it, it, instead of working together on things as the branches, it's more of just kind of like fighting oh, and, yeah. and fighting over one man who who doesn't care about it. No who one doesn't man care about should anyone. have all that power. Not even Donald Trump. No. I like Donald Trump Jr.'s uh, Instagram post with 
Trump has Baby Yoda, and it said the Magalorian. Donald Trump Jr. is the definition of tryhard. Dude, his his, his have bio you, have, on Instagram is a uh, general in the meme war, and I'm like, dude. Yeah, he uh, he he likes to trigger people. Oh yeah, trigger incoming in three, two, one. Uh oh, Ryan, you seem a little triggered right now. I do seem a little triggered. I tr I'm. I'm I'm triggered by that by that man's use of uh, Hillary in a jail cell on the clip of his AR-15. <laughs> it's just ridiculous. I want to say uh, he's such he's he's such a goof, man. He's he's a big he's a big old goober. I think goober is the best word for him. He's a goober. Yeah, I mean, here's the thing. I was gonna call him stupid, but like my 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 intelligence isn't isn't up there with 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 the elite, you know. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not too high in the intelligence bracket. Trump Jr. is like trying to like be like his dad. Well, I mean that's that's the plan. I'm I'm sure he wants to run, right? I'm sure he'll run for president at some point. I I don't feel like he'd he'd have the backing that well, Trump he's, does he's right now. The the top polling for 2024. <laughs> Trump and, Jr. Trump Jr. and uh, Ivanka. No no joke for the for the president presidency in 2024 they did well, early polling but that's early polling that doesn't really say yeah. much but well i mean i mean it kind of tracks with what the right side of the political spectrum has, has been going with which is the cult of personality yeah totally um i'm not saying that the left doesn't fall into that at all because there definitely are you know like i mean obama was a big personality with the left you know yeah, yeah. well they, there are a lot of memes from obama's face yeah. But uh, I don't, I, there's there's something new. There's something brand spanking new about this, even though it, it's been old news and people are tired of other people talking about it. And I'm sorry that we're talking about it, but it's it, it is a new year. Big things are happening, and we're going to probably have to put up with. I think we're definitely going to have to put up with Trump for another four years, four or five. Yeah, four years. Damn. Yeah, we'll see, man. <laughs> we'll see. I'm I'm I I honestly just like I I can't predict anything anymore because. It, it's always just completely unpredictable. Why try? Don't trust. Well, I, I think, um, you know, as you're growing up, especially in your 20s, you're learning new things and you're and things are being solidified. Like we all knew that agencies and huge organizations are corrupt. But when you think of news agencies, yeah, they they are corrupt in their own way, but you don't really see it until you start paying attention to politics and stuff like that. For instance, um, you can be a fan of like <clears throat> you can be a someone on the on the left and you can watch MSNBC and you can watch you can watch CNN and all these people. But the, the thing is that in a sense, same with Fox News, they're going against their party sometimes because, for instance, uh, Bernie Sanders will poll well, but he won't even show up on the screen because they don't want to give him any TV time or any face time because yeah, they yeah, don't yeah. want to they don't want to advertise him. Right. And so both it's just it's just kind of like just it's all so shitty. And that's the really and, is, yeah. and and honestly, that's the. I'm not saying that's why Trump's president, but that's one of the biggest reasons that 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 he has become our president, and and probably will continue to be our president, is because we're so fragmented and people are. Before corruption, you couldn't really without without the internet, you couldn't see it as easily. Now that everyone's minds are working together and they can see shit, it's just right there, and you're it's well, so I think obvious. It doesn't get changed. Yeah, like it's obvious, but like nothing really happens. It's not changing with the times. No, and so like you can, you, you really can look at it with a with a mic like a microscope and kind of pick it apart. Also, what uh, one 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 other thing to throw on top of this, uh -huh. uh, just a little fun fact: Super Mega paid more in taxes this year than Amazon. Did fun we? Fact. Amazon paid zero. Why? Zero dollars. But why? I don't know. They just don't pay taxes. Doesn't make sense. Is, 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 is there a rule where you make enough money that you don't have to pay taxes anymore because you bring in so much for the economy or whatever? I I don't know. They just don't pay taxes. A lot of a lot of big companies don't, and and because it's just corrupt. So I like that Super Mega pays more taxes than Amazon. Fun fact, very fun little fact right there. Yeah, my 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 bank accounts uh Oof. being just, you know I thought I thought Iran had trouble. Oh my god, dude. Yeah, taxes a. Uh, sucking me off this year and not in a good way they're giving me very bad head right now big toothy blowjob and i'm not not enjoying it not excited to uh i was like hey i got some savings to, nope never number mind number crunching yeah uh but yeah the tax is definitely wiped out about 50 percent of my shit oh me too because <laughs> we're, we're doing our taxes early this year and i'm just like oh no i should have saved more money this year but it's a good taxes. thing we well you and i I guess we should save more, but we yeah. save we save enough to cover ourselves. To cover yeah, we're, our we're still fine. It's just uh, Uncle Sam is reaching in my pocket and taking a nice little uh, 
give me, give me. That's what he's saying. He's saying, can you give me that money? Well, come on. How, how else would politicians enjoy their sheet crab soup and escargot, dude? That's true. That's absolutely true. I, I can't can't disagree with you on that one. Actually, I had a dream I was holding a snail last night just on when you brought up escargot. It was crawling across my hand, but it wasn't leaving any slime. I have this just memory for some reason that popped up in my head of this this kid at a playground that like saw a snail and it was like one of the first times I saw a snail just kind of like roaming around. I was like, whoa, is that a snail? He's like, yeah. And then he just steps on it and I hear the crack and you see like the cracked shell. Oh, what like, a I'm psychopath. Like, like, what the fuck, dude? I mean, yeah, I do that to, to other bugs, but it's not a pest. It's not doing anything. No, a snail is minding his own business, dude, moving it like a point two miles per hour. Swat a fly. Swat a mosquito. Don't Sna- don't swat a snail. Snails are cute. I, I think so. I think snails are cute. A lot of people would disagree with me. They think they're creepy looking. I think th- I think there's something very cute about snails. You would like the movie Turbo. <laughs> I don't think I would. Why not? The, the CG movie about the snail that races? Yeah. <laughs> I don't think I would like that movie, honestly. Oh, okay. I mean, you didn't try. You liked Angry Birds. Well, that, okay. Well, that's very different. Angry Birds was... Angry Birds was a good fucking movie. Yeah, but you didn't know that going in. But Turbo just does not... It, it Matt, not... odds are you have to watch Turbo two times in a row this week. Oh, shit, dude. I already have so much shit on my plate. I'm sorry. Week. Odds are? 50. <sighs> Three, two, one, Seven. 39. Oh, thank, God, thank God. Thank God. I did not want to have to watch Turbo twice. Yeah, I know. I could tell by the high number. Yeah, I was, I, that's really... I just got, I got so much on my mind and so much shit this week. I'm like, I, I, that's the last thing I want to do. And I do it, too. I, I have to. You got a lot of cleaning and... A lot of cleaning. I got a lot of life organizing to be done and and actually you know what speaking of the middle east speaking of good movies we did something oh shit yeah we did we did something we've been talking about forever because you've always wanted to see this particular movie okay if you remember in a past podcast i think it was a podcast several podcasts and several let's plays we've talked about how badly i've wanted to see the movie but there was one specific podcast where i said i saw this movie and you chastised me for not buying it because it was 4.99 and we looked it up on amazon and it turned out to be 6 or 7.99 that's right that's right because ryan saw a copy of larry the cable guy delta farce at uh what were you, were you at amoeba in hollywood yes and you saw a blu-ray copy for i didn't give away the location because i was afraid someone would go and fucking snatch it well guess what we went and snatched it yeah, up. We went to go see 1917, and then afterwards we were like, we're in the war movie mood, dude. <laughs> Let's watch an even better movie. So we went over to Amoeba, and honestly, my heart sank for about the first two minutes we were looking around Amoeba because we looked at the D section in comedy, and we couldn't find it. Oh, my God, we it. couldn't find it. But and, then all of a and sudden. I was like, there's no, because Ryan, you had brought up that you had seen it like weeks before. And yeah. you're like, oh, we'll go and get it because there's no way someone went in and bought Delta Farce. <laughs> no. You know? You're but like, then we're thinking, maybe someone did. You no, know, it's a big but city. Maybe thankfully, someone might have done it. Thankfully, like the North Star that guided the wise men, a light shone out to me from one of the crates, and there it was, Delta Farce. And not only was Delta Farce there, brand spanking new, baby. Unopened, factory-sealed wow. copy. Sticker still sealing it Delta and everything. It, so that movie's only been put inside of a Blu-ray player once. And it was at your place yep. in your Blu-ray player with my eyes and your eyes glued to that screen. So Matt and I had a double feature. First, we saw 1917, which we'll talk about after we talk about Delta the Farce. The more important movie we'll talk yeah. about first. Delta Farce. Wait, wait. We're going to talk about Delta Farce? And not these wonderful uh, uh, advertisements that we are forced to read? Ah, oh, we made it. The holidays. Ah, oh, we made it. The holidays came and went so fast, didn't Ooh. they? They will be missed, Ryan. But we also think it's time to just throw on some comfy pants and chill out. MeUndies wants you to treat yourself to some self-care and truly relax after all that hustle well, and bustle. Matt, you don't, you don't get it? What? Treat yourself. Come on. What's it from? What? Parks and Recreation? I haven't seen Parks and Recreation. I, don't, I think that might be what it's from. Well, you should, you should get over all that hustle and bustle in the softest undies and loungewear on earth. Literally so soft, it should be illegal. And it probably will be illegal in a year or two, so I'd go snatch them up now. Matt, it's cold out, and it gets dark at like 4 p.m. And because of this hor- horrible situation we find ourselves in, MeUndies wants you to know that they'll bring you some real comfort in the chilly months ahead. In sizes extra small to four extra large, with plenty of brand new products, the options of getting cozy are endless. When they say cozy, Matt, they mean it with MeUndies 
that are three times softer than cotton in the cutest wintry prints and colors. That's like really soft. Oh my god, so MeUndies is nice enough to uh, send me and Ryan a couple pairs to try out every few months and um, we share them. Uh, we'll split, we'll give them back and forth. It's, it's kind of like how, how my childhood was. A, a week with mom, a week with dad. So it's like a week with Matt, a week with Ryan. Yeah, and I gotta say that they are, I'm not bullshitting you guys, they are the most comfortable underwear I've ever, I'm wearing them right now. Well, I'm wearing this one. See, look, it's the, uh, what it's- What am I wearing, Matt? Oh, wait, hold on. <laughs> Uh, oh, MeUndies. Those are MeUndies. <laughs> God damn it. God, if people know it, if they, if they knew what I was looking at right now, if they if they, if, if they only knew what I just saw, those are black MeUndies. And I'm wearing this one with the, like, the rainbow, the pastel colors. And they make you confident, like Ryan just was. Uh, listen to this, guys. MeUndies has a great offer for our listeners. For any first-time purchasers, you get 15% off and free shipping. That's a no-brainer. You don't even need a brain to get that, especially because they have a 100% satisfaction guarantee. To get your 15% off your first pair, free shipping, and a 100% satisfaction guarantee, go to MeUndies.com slash SuperMega. <laughs> What's that, Matthew? That's MeUndies.com slash SuperMega. Yay, B.I.D.s. <laughs> MeUndies sound pretty comfortable, but do they taste good? Um, well, they don't taste bad, Ryan, but you know what does taste good? My favorite food, honey. And speaking of honey, <gasps> you know that honey is the free online shopping tool that automatically finds the best promo codes and applies them to your cart. And you know how great it feels to save. But how does it feel to save with honey? Saving with honey feels like sliding into a seat on the train just before the doors close. But yeah. Uh, feels like uh, hitting every green light uh, on your commute. Oh, 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 uh, recently I was... Uh, buying, oh, what was it? What was, oh, I can't remember. I bought something back in December uh, online and I was about to check out and honey popped up. The, it was like, whoa, uh, you could be saving money right now. And it saved me like 30 bucks. I'm fully serious. 30? It sounds Smack, like it smackers? Sounds, it sounds like I'm blowing smoke. I don't remember exactly what it was. You're not blowing smoke, Matt. Ryan is. To put the cigarette out. Okay, sorry. But seriously, I it, uh, it saved me like 30 bucks. And then another time was when I bought uh, my Nike Cortez Classics and Honey saved me like 20 bucks. Well, it's not just you, Matt. Honey has found over 18 million members and over $2 billion in savings for those members. Isn't that crazy? That actually scares me because that's so much money and so many members. That many people are using Honey, guys. There's no reason not to because using Honey feels great. Think of it as a little daily victory. Plus, it's free to use and installs in just a few seconds. Just two clicks. Get Honey for free at joinhoney.com slash megacast. That's joinhoney.com slash megacast. Nice. Let's get back into this uh, Delta <sighs> farce convo. We're in Iran! <laughs> We're in Iraq! See, I said Iran to make it more timely. Yeah. Cause, well, you know, well, actually, you know what? We watched this movie right before the... Uh, Iran stuff happened. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, do maybe it's because we watched the movie. It's kind of like the universe was was putting things in our head, like, hey, guys, prepare uh, for war. So They're giving us ideas because we were talking about making a sequel. I know, I know. Why not make a direct, like, to VOD, like, just, you know. We're in Iran! Yeah. I'll tell you what a dang old Ayatollah, uh... Don't ask. Don't tell. That movie... Well, let's talk about this movie. I, uh... I knew it wasn't gonna be good going into it. Because I, like, you know, it was like a... It was like a, a guilty pleasure watch. It's like, we're gonna watch the Larry the Cable Guy movie that you saw for your birthday one year in theaters. I was lucky enough to see it for lucky my birthday enough. in theaters, I mean, honestly, yeah. like, you... I don't know if it was for my birthday. I think it... I think it might have been... I definitely saw it in theaters with, with my pops. Let me see when it released. Did he think it was funny? Did he enjoy it? Oh, of course. That's there's a lot. There's a lot of like Larry the Cable Guy falling down. Oh, when he falls down, it does make. I me might lie. have seen it for my birthday because it, it came out? out May 11th, 2007. That it, that, that, it, that, does, that does sound. like It would have it, had to have been in the theaters for over a month. Yeah, an average run. Yeah. And it, and I'm gonna break away from this convo real quick. It might be a new year, but that doesn't mean that that watch still can't fucking interrupt the conversation. I just got this watch. I don't know. I, it, it's brand new. That was automatically on the the beeping. It's one time you legitimately had to hide your watch on top of a pillar outside of a movie theater. I don't know how to turn the fucking beeper off. You just look it up online. I will. I will. I just got this watch. So I got a new Casio watch. So sorry. My bad. 
But uh, it, it that it was good, good ass movie, solid movie. A lot of funny jokes. Danny Trejo was in it. He's yeah. the bad guy. I didn't realize that the green screen was so noticeable when I was younger, but now it's just like Jesus Christ. It, it, like this is a movie that you give us. Honestly, you give Matt and I two million, and we can make the, we can make a sequel, a much better sequel too. Yeah, <clears throat> seriously, who at Universal, Sony? I don't know who made Larry yeah, the Cable Guy. Because at the end of the day, you and I you give us two, actually give us two point five million, a million for you, a million for me, and five hundred thousand for the rest of the shit. That would work great. Yeah. <laughs> it's all a scam, dude. I'm fine with that, dude. <clears throat> Oh, I'll scam the, the the movie picture companies. My my question though is how come they went with two out of the four uh like blue collar guys, you know? Yeah. Instead of instead of going because they got Larry the Cable Guy and they got Bill Engvall and they got the just they got a an an actor not like a I don't know if he's a comedian of any kind I don't, I don't think he is <clears throat> I mean he was in he's in like I've seen him in side roles like in, he was he was Breaking, Breaking Bad. Bad as the uh, undercover cop that was selling uh, what's his name he looks like Jackson yeah yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah he looks like Jackson he kind of looks like uh, Jackson with Carson's body yeah yeah and, and like he stay like his 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 he stands l like like. Like like a Tucker brother, he does. He kind of looks like he could be like the fourth oldest Tucker brother that then like went off and pursued acting. Yeah, and, and I think that it's uh, the the movie had a lot of really funny jokes, like the like the uh, the gay guy that everyone was scared of because he was gay. The gay the gay fat Mexican man. Yes, and uh, they used him as like their secret weapon. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Because mm -hmm. they they were like they're like just wait until you see what he does with you. And the uh, guy was like, "Oh no!" I think it's alluded to that the staff sar or that the sergeant um, was raped. It does, yeah, it does. Right, I think so. I'm pretty sure. I mean, I I might have to watch the movie again if I if I want to analyze this kind of stuff deeper. They may they they give him drugs, and he and the two people that pick him up in that in that sick 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 car, um, they pick him up, and then the next thing we know. He's waking up in a house and he has a dress and lipstick on and he's running out. Yeah, that's right. That's right. And my favorite part is uh, my favorite part is at the movie at the end. Um, they do the classic thing where like right when the movie ends during the credits, they just start showing all the bloopers. And it's like, look at everyone having a good time on set. And then and then just slowly like on the screen, it scrolls up. It says this this movie was is dedicated to to the armed forces <laughs> serving overseas. And I was like, that's just what they wanted. <laughs> I know the, the people get risking their lives every day overseas. Absolutely, probably they they're really grateful for that. God, you know what production production company would have done this movie justice what? because the jokes fall in line with what this production company has A24. done in the past. No, close. Happy Gilmore. Sorry, oh. Happy Madison. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Happy Gilmore. Honestly, is the... <laughs> Adam Sandler could have been in that movie as a as like a cameo. Because what if he directed it? That movie. So one thing that's interesting is is I saw the uh, the box office pull, mm -hmm. but I, nowhere online can I find the budget for it. I can't really? find how much it cost, and I wonder if they just didn't put it out because it's embarrassing. It was like, wow. I thought ridiculous. they had to make that shit public. I thought so too, but I can't. I can't. I tried searching it the other night. I couldn't find it anywhere. Let's let's see Delta Delta Farce budget. Like I could not find it, and I bet Ryan's gonna be able to find it very easily. But it, it was just such a enlightening experience to watch that movie especially after seeing such an awful movie like 1917 holy shit what did you find it okay so in the in the domestic box office hold on it made 8 million dollars and then international so it, then it made 600,000 somewhere overseas in Iraq i don't know where it played it but then the worldwide box office was in total just 8.7 million Wow, that's bad. But then the DVD sales were twenty four million. What the fuck? Yes, and uh, we could, we're, we're still we just contributed five four so, ninety nine to that. So the DVD sales were three times that of when it was in theaters. Damn, that's <clears throat> fucking unreal, dude. But I don't. It made three million on the opening weekend. Uh, it played in almost two thousand theaters for uh av average run per theater was. About three weeks, almost a month. So it's very possible you could have seen it for your birthday then. It is very possible. But uh, what? What's up, Jackson? Is he masturbating? Yeah, he is. He's does, stroking his little. His does little he actually there. have his penis out? Yeah. 
Okay. What's up, Jackson? Oh, where are your keys? I can't find They're on the counter. Okay. In the kitchen. The kitchen? Oh. Yeah. About to head out? Yeah, I'm uh, I'm, I'm going on strike. Oh, I'm shit. Borrow, I'm Again? I'm Matt's car to go get some uh, little art supplies. So me and Justin can build some posters. Oh, I'm excited. Okay, yeah, well, good luck some, with the I'm strike. I'm glitter for mine. Yeah, well, <laughs> okay. good, good luck with that. And Justin probably wants some glitter, too. Get googly eyes for Justin's. Yes, he loves googly eyes. For his, his strike sign. Well, good luck with the strike, man. Let and me uh let, let we'll, us know we'll how see, it goes. Yeah, we'll, we'll see how it goes. Okay. All right. See you, man. We'll see you. We'll see you outside. I'm guessing, right? Yeah. Or uh, what are what are what are picketing hours? Because I want to make sure I'm at the office. When well, you're... I'm gonna get a bunch of people there, so I'm gonna post the address of the office online. So okay. Yeah. Okay. More than. We'll come join me and start picketing. Well, we want to support our employees if they want to go on strike. Yeah. No know? problem. Go for it, man. Okay. Cool. We right. we we do have the right though to hire private security. Yeah. Okay. So I'm just making sure and we I'm have not, just, and and what whatever the whatever they do, we are not we are not. We are not culpable, and luckily we do have a scab, Harrison, so we can get him in when Jackson's yeah. not here. But uh, I just want I just want you to be careful because sometimes private security can get a little. You know how they can get. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You remember? You remember the birthday party? Now, uh, do you know if this security company has a union? They go on strike too. <laughs> you <laughs> you get them. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I man. That's, that's funny, right? Yeah. yeah. That's yep. good shit. You should make it reality and see how funny it actually is. Yeah, go on strike. I could, you know, if I'm under strike, I could try blackmail all day. <laughs> okay, Jack. I, I think whichever, whichever you guys prefer. If if you if you if you want to go the blackmail route, Justin is probably the number one person to go to. Yeah. Oh yeah. I know. Uh, for sure, man. We can't run for president. I'll put it that way. Well, now we can. actually maybe we could. <laughs> we'll see. I think our chances of, if if anything, do you think that. Since Trump became became in in the world of statistics, look at this in whole life numbers numbers Mr. Matt. number you know what I'm saying? I know what you're Just saying. a lot numbers. of numbers, a lot of equations in the Mr. world in, in our life in our universe. Did the chances of Matt and I statistically, like, did the chances of us becoming president statistically did they go up? Yes, for beca sure. I, I because because Donald Trump became low. president, or do you think they're no, the exact same? I, I think that we are more likely to be. Uh, I almost said indicted. More likely to be um, elected because um, now the the role of of the presidency is not seen the same anymore. It's not it's not quite the same as it as it was before. So I think that we do have a better better shot now at being elected. And okay. if I ever decide to take that route, you know, I might have to thank the big man himself, oh, DJT Jackson. Before you go on strike, there's one more thing I'm going to need you to do. Yeah. Anyway. Uh, could you just take over the podcast real quick? I got to take a shit. Yeah, of course. Okay. Yeah, yeah. All right. And then after this, I promise you can go on strike. Yeah, you can go on okay, strike right cool. after this. Thanks, I've been waiting. Man. Thank you. Uh, what's up, Jackson? Hey, not a whole lot. Yeah? Yeah. Get the mic a little closer to you. Yeah. You gotta Is be, that good? You got to be right up on that Wait, thing. I'm going to go get my bag of pretzels. <laughs> hey, Pretzel Gate 2020, baby. Baby. Hey, baby. It's good to have you on the podcast, Jack. Thanks. How was your uh, How was your New Year's and, and Christmas? It was nice. I, uh, I got to see my family. They came out to the sunny city of Los Angeles. Yeah, that was very we, nice. We had a nice season. little time. Yeah, we went to we went to uh, New Year's Eve. We went to a nice tiki bar with we them. We did. Uh, New Year's Eve was very fun. New Year's I, Eve I, I had a lot, a of, lot fun. of fun. I missed the countdown by accident because I it, it was coming up really soon. It was it was like eleven fifty nine. I was like, oh, I need to pull up like, cause I did I didn't have like any way to see like the actual time by the seconds. So I was like, oh, I'm gonna go on one of those websites that shows the exact time. And I uh, I jump on in there, and as I'm searching the website, it the time switched goes. over to midnight. And I was like, oh, okay, it's a new well, decade. There I, it is. Uh, I was taking a shit, and I was like, oh, I should call my girlfriend because it's midnight. And so I was like, I didn't realize it was going to be midnight, and I just really had to go shit. So I was like, well, yeah, you Yeah, because you were gone when the thing, yeah. like, I, we were like, I was like, well, because somebody else was in the other bathroom. I was like, oh, let me go to the other one in the house. So I went there to take a shit, and then I was like, well, it's 11.59. I can't very well get up and walk out there now. So well, I'm, You uh, could have. Start the start the new start decade Start the new year with a, a little, little doo doo on my ass. I I I I like it. What better way for for you to start the new decade than Dude, by shitting? It's hey. very it's very on brand. I appreciate that. Going out like I lived it. <laughs> you ended the decade shitting. You started the decade shitting. Yeah. That's good. That's good. I like that a lot. And then uh, I I've been having a lot of dreams about uh, shitting myself lately. Well, you texted me the other day, and you were like, "Do you remember when I shit in your face uh, back in college?" I was like, "Not how not could I forget?" Not like, I mean, not like Bippy. Style. Literally, yes, but there was the less than sorry. six inches from my face to the shit. Well, that my was pants were on when I did. No, it. you were just wearing underwear. 
No, I'm pretty sure I just no, had a pair it, of shorts. It was, it was just was, a pair of boxers. I remember. It was not a pair of boxers. It was a pair shorts. of what like. What was I doing just to my boxers? It was a pair of you. plaid boxers. I don't, we were having a sleepover. I thought, I thought that I was. That sounds like middle, no, like middle school. Like, oh, you and your boxers were having a fun. No, sleep, it was like over. it was the one time that I slept, or not the one time, the first time I slept over at your house uh, in Mount Pleasant. And I did shit in your face. Yeah. You did shit. Hey, it's like, okay, watch, man. Get a load of this, and then just pretty bad. Ryan's back. So Jackson, you are free to uh, go on strike. I mean, now. unless you'd rather do the strike for me, Ryan, I can hang out in here while you do the strike. Well, that's your call if you want to go on strike, Ryan. If I go on strike, does that mean I can go like play Call of Duty? Right you could go play Call of Duty. Uh, I mean, that, that's yeah. a my strike. What? <laughs> <laughs> if like strike, you choose your own hours. Okay. So I mean, it's whatever see, I'm gonna be outside. No, see, I have the switch. I'm just gonna be outside playing Final Fantasy. Yes. No, no, no! You still get paid. You're just going on strike for me, so you're still getting you're your check. Scam artist Jackson, I understand, but like, I, I, Jackson's the type of guy. On this one and then take my seat back. Doesn't Jackson look like he could easily <sighs> swindle you out of a couple million? Is that type of guy that would, you know? Aaron said this about Review Bra once. He looks like the type of guy that would smile and shake your hand and swindle you out of two million dollars. <laughs> I, I disagree with that. There's too much love in those eyes. No, there, there is, but you have you you kind of have that look. Like, see that smile right there? That's the smile of a man that There's could no swindle some money. Just, it's just, uh, I, I'm purely self-motivation. Yeah. I like that. That's how it worked for That's Super That's what he's Mega. doing right now. He's swindling us. Well, go on strike. I, I'm Have pushing fun. my brand right now. Like Thank you. Nice boots, dude. Are they made for walking? Yeah. Is that just what they'll do? I, One of these days, those boots are going to walk all over me? I, I don't know what you're saying. It's the song, dude. What? These boots are made for walking. Do you know what he's talking and about, Ryan? that's just what they'll do. Uh, one of these days, these boots are gonna walk all over you. Do you know what he's talking about? Not a, I don't think. I don't think I've ever heard this song. I don't think so. I've never heard of this song. All right, Jackson, go on strike. Well, I'm, I'm stealing equipment from the office. I'm gonna take the mic with me. He just takes the mic with him outside. Well, have fun, Jackson. Right. Hey, good luck with the strike, man. I love you. I love you too. Hey, have fun, dude. Wait. Ooh. Hey, good luck out there. Thank you. Ooh. 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 All right. Will you try this? No, I don't want any alcohol. Please, it, it's just the flavor. God, please do another time. I don't want that. I'll try it. Okay. What is it? Drink, it's Vanthu, which is Chinese liquor. Jackson just real quick brought us some. Oh, I smell it. Jackson it brought us some Chinese liquor. Woo! It smells like mouthwash. I've never tasted something weirder than this. It's. How's it taste? <laughs> Ooh. Oh, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> Did you feed me? Did you feed me detergent? No, it His eyes are watering. My body like rejects it. I'm really trying Matt. To... Matt, just like Matt, it's please. just a little sip. come on, just take it. Oh my god! Can I spit it back into the cup? My my mouth and throat feel like I just no. did mouthwash. I gargled mouthwash okay. for like two minutes. What's it called? Banthu. Banthu. Okay. So oh, it like, woke me up though. It's Chinese. <laughs> it, it, it wires you up because you're like, fuck! I wasn't expecting that. Oh, Bantu. it smells it, it, despicable. It's, it's so complex. There's so many weird ass flavors you, there, like you did not expect. And Matt, you love sweet, right? Yeah. This is like this is this is a weird sweet. Yeah. It's like sweet. All right. But okay. You went for a lot. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> 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 What's your reaction, my friend? <laughs> right? So, I, I just, Where'd you get this? Oh, uh, Monterey Park. Jesus, my eyes. You gonna are pour the rest in the sink? That my was friend? the tiniest I sip. This, I was like, I'm so curious. I've seen this stuff everywhere. Cause you see the billboards poured around LA. There's like the really. Not yeah, they're, popular I think there are like about three billboards outside of Ebbing, Missouri. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Same thing. It's disgusting. My throat is burning. Uh, what I can describe it is it tastes like concentrated Red Bull with an after note of blue cheese. Blue cheese. Do you taste see? the cheese? Like the cheesy aftertaste? Do you need another sip? I see the cheese too. That was like, when I tried it, I was like plum and cheese. Blue cheese. Blue, and like, it tastes like blue yeah. cheese at the end. It starts like really strong Red Bull flavor and ends with like a blue cheese flavor. Well, I didn't know. Like they, when they drink it, they have like a third of a shot. But, like, I didn't know that, so I poured myself a full shot and drank it, and, like... Oh, you did a full shot of it? That's... <laughs> oh, dude! Oh, oh. I'm so sorry you had to experience I can't that. even do a full shot of regular, I'm like, like, liquor. It's wild. It's nasty. Go try that if if it's if you guys ever find it. That's And are of age. That I I had Bye. the smallest sip. See you, Jackson. Have fun. Y'all, too. Be, uh, what time is it? Time for uh, you okay. to get a watch. Yeah, I'll see y'all at, like, probably... He's gonna go to the PO yeah. box okay. and pick Sounds up all that mail. Get it? Check, Check in the, the mail. mail. Anyway, um... Delta Farce was an incredibly fun night for me. 
I really had a blast with you. Uh, and I would. That was a really, again. honestly, like, when's the last time it, because you and I hang out, <clears throat> but we, we we rarely anymore hang out just you and I. Yeah, that was fun. That was really fun. I'll do that again. Let's uh let's watch another bad movie soon. I really want to watch. I sent you that screenshot of a movie that I saw. Granddaddy that, Daycare with Danny Trejo. Dude, we should just watch every comedy movie Danny Trejo's in. I think that's impossible. I feel like that is over a lifetime's worth of movies. He's been in a lot of movies. He's just in every. He's, he's just, he'll just show films. up. Yeah. He's in Dora the Explorer. He's diversified, man. He has a taco restaurant. He has a. Does he have uh, a donut shop? He has a donut shop. Like in LA, he's he's kind of like, and recently he did a marionette show at, the, at this marionette theater in Los Angeles. He just opened up Trejo's Clit Piercings down on Hollywood Boulevard. I might have to check that place out. Next to my mom's in town, you know, she's been she's got it. She got a tattoo recently, so she's getting a little more adventurous. Ooh, like, all right, on, let's go check. This all right, out. I'll get my clip pierced too. But uh, it's fucking. <laughs> Why is <laughs> I was trying to hold my laugh when you Tra- said that. Trejo's like, clit piercing. Uh, we let's talk about the movie we saw right before Delta Farce, which paled in comparison. Nineteen seventeen. Nineteen seventeen. Best movie of the decade. This is the best movie I've seen so far this year. I don't think I've seen too many movies this year. Delta Farce. I've seen Delta. Farce. No, in terms of seen. theater movies, like new oh my god, movies that have released. It was. Well, you saw Cats. Was it better than Cats? Cats wasn't in twenty twenty. I don't believe. <gasps> I think I saw that. Oh, I saw that while I was back home. Damn, what a waste of a good two hours. I know. I heard it's horrible from everyone. But but nineteen it, seventeen. It's bad. It's so bad you can't even have fun with it. Mm, you that, know? That's never fun. See, Delta Farce I could have fun with, but yeah, this is just Cats does not look fun. Nineteen seventeen was a great movie experience. I would recommend if you are going to watch nineteen seventeen. Try to do it in a theater, yeah. even if you have to wait for the dollar theater. I just think like the theater experience with the like Deacons, you know, Deacons knows how to shoot shit. And so uh, him being the cinematographer for this um, really, really helped a lot. My God, because usually you would yeah. think the first thing you do in a war movie. I know they did this. OK, one thing I want to first thing you think of you that you would do in a war movie would be very hectic shots. Very like, let's Shaky, shake the camera. Yeah. Um, but um, he did it to where not only is the shot composition wonderful because it's I don't know. Deacons knows how to do his shit. He's 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 one of the best out there Been around the block. You can the, tell the thing that I always find extraordinary when a movie does it right and I Birdman did it right in this movie I noticed it and I was paying attention to it and I really uh, I really respected and appreciated it is the amount of choreography and planning that has to go up with shot composition when the camera's moving all the time because you're not cutting to different shots yeah you have to get like think of like great landscape shots now think of an establishing shot then think of a close up shot this movie has to kind of go through all of that in one take. in 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 one take like you you it like you get an establishment of the base and then you get a tracking shot through the tunnels and then you then you get a profile of, of a character that's speaking action. dialogue it it like the the movie looks incredible and i think it's 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 acted well yes and for what well, real quick for those who don't know the movie <clears throat> the entire movie is shot to look like one long take mm-hmm. the whole version like of course there are cuts uh but you don't you never notice well, when you if you're looking for them, it's obvious when those cuts it's like, are. Oh, it was an explosion. It was like when it know. cuts to black or something. Like when when there's an explosion in the screen, like all the lights go out for like they flicker. It's like yeah. oh, there was a cut. But God, it, or it's when they flawless. go past a hill, yeah, and like it goes past the hill. It's just like you. That's not the point. The point of these movies isn't to tell where the cut is because if you pay attention, you'll be able to tell. It's it's not rocket science. But at the same time, they, I agree where they did it in a way where you're not really. I noticed when, you know, stuff like that happened in terms of like, oh, they, they probably cut it there because I was looking for it. But it's just they do it so well. There's one shot in particular. Actually, there's not just one shot. Sorry. There's so many fucking. Shots. There's the shot where they're going around like that pond and or, the camera goes over the pond. Yes. And they go around. It's yeah. like, they didn't need to do that. Like, no, they could have just gone around the pond with them. But the, they're like, oh, let's let's have the camera go like right over the water and then up the hill. I was like. God, the, like the crane work yeah. in that movie, like whoever operated the cranes and the like all that shit. Like I feel bad for the cameraman who ever has to hold that camera for that long. You whoever, know how tiring like, whoever, that is. Shout out to the cameraman or, or the the people that did camera work in that movie because yeah. that had to be so hard and taxing. 
I think like just another thing that's technically impressive about the movie was the whole scene where they were uh, lighting the scenes with flares and fire in the in the kind of burning town. Yeah, where like most of the lighting came from like a flare up in the sky going yeah. up like that it gets so many ideas across where like the guy doesn't have to say aloud they're shooting flares up so they can see me and I have to and I, oh, I, I better run when the flare goes down you just get it just, yeah like it's it, it, such an action filled movie and, the, and what I was thinking about when I watched it was uh, the if you could see in third person outside the camera mm -hmm. just imagine because you know like the crew was just running behind the whole time with like microphones. Cause think about like someone with a mic had to be running with them the whole time mm -hmm. through all that mud. Someone had with like reflectors and lights to be running. And when the camera moves, they all have to run behind to get behind it. Like that had to be really exhausting. And they, and they did it. Well, if they, if they there's two, com not complaints, but there's two like, uh, you know, when you do pros and cons, I guess there's two cons of mine from the movie would be that not enough sex. Yes. Not enough sex, but, um, one would be I honestly think hiring uh, very famous British actors um, to just kind of have their cameos every now and then, like Mark Strong, um, Benedict Cumberbatch. Benedict Cumberbatch. I honestly felt it took me out of the film. It does, yeah, because it's like, oh, that's been – especially an actor that's so distinctively that's, unique. It's Colin Firth. Yeah, it's like, oh, that's – That was Firth, right? Yeah. Yeah. Colin Firth, that's Mark Strong. That's that's uh Ben that dick cumbersnatch. Yeah, and so like I feel like those were two like on the nose. It, which sucks because there comes a point in an actor's life where they're like so famous, like Tom Hanks, where you can't really see him as anyone but Tom Hanks. But at the same time, this movie casted them specifically to play kind of cameo small roles, so it was a little more like it's a little more focused in that moment. And you're like, oh, that's just who that is. You're not thinking of them because usually these actors have a whole movie's worth, like a whole like an hour and a half to two and a half hours to develop the character as they're going on. But these people only have like five minutes on screen. And so you're like, oh, that's just that actor. You're not really getting a vibe, like a feel for them as their character. And then the um and they throw them in just because it's like oh yeah it's big a big name and you know I, I saw him in the preview I'm like I'm gonna go see this it has big people in it I well, guess I'll it, trust it's a draw to it it's like you look at the cast you're like oh Benedict Cumberbatch is in yeah. oh Mark Strong I I I, I want to give them proper credit real quick but we're talking about the 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 big kind of celebrity names in this movie but uh George Ma uh McKay or Mackey however you want to pronounce it or or Dean Charles Chapman both of those actors did a stellar Incredible. job Incredible. I've never stellar seen anything job. and I was just that movie uh their performance made me cry on two separate occasions in that movie do you think M A C capital K A Y do you think that's McKay McKay Mac okay. so George McKay oh my he he I'm not going to say he like blew me away in this film but I really like him as an actor. I think they casted him perfectly with yes. his look. I, I, this is going to sound mean, but he has his look, his face fits what the movie's going for in like the World War II era. It, it's very, he looks very British. He looks very and British. that's not an insult because I know a lot that, that can be used yeah. as an insult. And and the way he emotes and uh, works with his face, he has a very kind of like flushed kind of like yeah. look when like something like, like how fucked up going would be on in war, I imagine. yeah and so like he acted that perfectly um chapman did what uh, dean charles sorry dean charles chapman he was amazing did too. a great job um i and the other con sorry i, I have to mention this before before because i i did like a lot about this film my favorite scene is the the singing scene just because i i i like the transition i i liked the scene the scenes that it transitioned from and into. Yes. I thought that worked perfectly and just that uh, scene in general. But uh, the con uh, said one was the celebrity and two honestly would just kind of be the how how the movie's technical aspects were so great and the acting was so good that I really felt like the um, the story lacked in terms of like it was a very simple story. Like it was a little like too kind of hokey in terms of some of the story beats, like the looking at pictures of family, the doing, you know, all of this, which is something you would, of course, attach onto a war film. But I think it, it as a war movie, it was a very by the numbers war movie in, in the story. Like we've when you think of a war movie, this is exactly what that is. The movie was incredible. 
and it, and it really is a shame that um you know we had to see such uh an awful movie after <laughs> I know um, two two war movies yeah two 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 of our century's best war movies I'd say but I do recommend seeing 1917 because I really enjoyed I my was experience scratching my hand it. out of anxiety at parts like I I don't know if you saw but I was like twisting my skin and stuff because I was so anxious in certain scenes without even realizing it and I'm like ow my hands red. I, I did kinda, cry though. I cried twice. It has that. Uh, um, it kind of reminds me of uh, the the kind of tone of the anxiety because you know, like anxiety, there's different kind of feelings and levels yeah, and different situations strong. that it goes for. Um, it it was more similar to Dukirk than yes. anything. Yes, definitely. Cause, like w when I watched this movie, I felt like the the whole like kind of first person nature really made me feel like I was like, oh, this is what it would feel like if I was like in World War One. Yeah, and it got me so anxious. But God, great movie, great fucking movie. Um, I recommend it. Uh, I liked it more than Hacksaw Ridge, which a lot of people were raving about. I didn't see about. Hacksaw Ridge. I thought Hacksaw Ridge was even more hokey. Even though it is based on a true story and this dude is a fucking hero, yes. But Andrew Garfield isn't a war hero, so I can judge the movie. Yes, he is. <laughs> he, he he carried... It's the best sniper our, our <laughs> infantry has ever had. No, he didn't kill anyone. That's the point of the movie. You don't have to kill someone to be a sniper. <laughs> the, whole point, the whole point of the movie is that he, did, he, he refused a rifle. He's a pacifist. Yep. He's like, no, I am not going to use a rifle. No. And then uh, he, he throws he, a tantrum. He saved a bunch of people's lives. True story, right? Mm -hmm. Is that Clint Eastwood? No, that was Mel Gibson. Oh, okay, okay. Um, Yikes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but geez, man. Um, before we wrap it up, like, what else is new? We went to uh, Universal the other day with our with, good friends with Eddie, Jake, uh, Gus. Gus, Sven, and uh, Sabrina. Sabrina. Oh yeah, Sabrina was Tony. there and Tony. Okay. Yeah, no, it was it was a super fun time. We we just recently started hanging out with uh Gus Johnson and Eddie Burback and uh Nakey Jakey and those guys are amazing. Super cool guys. I feel like and an asshole, dude. Why? Why do you feel like an asshole? Cuz <sighs> Okay, can you can you can you can I want I want to solve this real quick in terms of the way I think about how other people think about me, right? So when when you invite me to something, your headspace before I even answer, are you just kind of like fifty fifty? Are you like he's probably just gonna say no, but yeah. I might as well invite him. Well, like, what 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 is your headspace? Because because I I dipped on Dave and Buster's just because I didn't feel like going out. Because I, I just I just have this like I even kind of left a little early at Universal because I was getting that this this anxious itch to be home. Yeah, I don't know how to explain well, it. I mean, everyone everyone has a different personality when it comes to that kind of stuff. Yeah. So like, when you invite me to things or when you extend the invitation, are you like more than more than likely he's gonna say no or not? Usually, yeah. Usually, yeah. I'm like, like, I'll, I want you to come, so I'll invite you, and I'll be like, I'm probably gonna say no, but. It's worth a shot. Yeah. Um, Every now and then I will say yes. Will, yeah. And and I'm I'm bummed you didn't come to Dave Musters because everyone everyone missed you. I got through was like, where's Ryan? I was like, Yeah. I feel bad because I do I do I do I did like hanging out with them. It was my first time meeting any of them. Um, They're super fucking cool guys. Little did I know, um I didn't know Jake did music and back in when did when did we go to Australia? September. So, yeah, sometime September like that. Um, October? We, Something like September, been, October. Yeah. Well, one of my playlists has like a song of his in it, and I had no fucking clue that it was him. Yeah, I had no idea. I, in fact, you were there when I found out it was and him. It was, it was after he'd already I was, gone. I back was like where he lived. looking up. I was like, oh, he does music, and I watched like this music video of him doing Orange Justice in emo clothes yeah. and uh, um. Emote in emo. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden I saw the thumbnail for another song that I recognized. And I, pl and I looked at him like, wait, this is this is Jake? I had no fucking clue that was Jake. So I know he's not going to listen to this, but if you guys, uh, it's, it's I, I feel like I have to give him a shout out because, you know, I hung out with him recently. I like his personality and I see, and I, and I he's liked cool his dude. music and I want to give him credit. Uh, the song that I, that I liked was uh, Moby Dick. Because it has one of my favorite lines in in a song of 2019. I I don't I'm not sure if I want to ruin it though. It's such a good line. Yeah, people should go listen to it. He's good. No, it, it's 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 like one of the first things he says. I think it is the first line maybe. If I had a nickel for every time I did this on stupid, 
And I'd have a shit ton of nickels. I just, I just love that. I'm just like, yeah, you would, dude. You'd have a shit ton yeah, of nickels. A shit ton of nickels. <laughs> Pockets full of. But, them. but it was Moby Dick by Jakey. No, yeah, dude, that's he, that's the song that I that I found out. Like, I didn't even know about Jake when he, I when I found this song. Yeah, and he, he's super down to earth. All of them are, man. Uh, Gus and, and Eddie and Jake are really cool dudes, and expect a uh, hopefully. In the I'm future, I'm too awkward tomorrow. in person, like at Universal, like. What the fuck? talking about you were, I, I dude I, you, I, you were busting out one-liners <laughs> that were like splitting my side I, I I feel for 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 Gus and for Eddie sometimes because they'll be trying to have a conversation with me and I won't know how to like carry a conversation because like I you, you being my friend you know how I am I promise you, you no being one, one of that, I, I know but you being one of my best friends you know how I act you know with new people I I I don't know how to kind of like well I felt bad because your introduction to them was right. I was going up the escalator because I had to take a mean shit, and we hadn't met up with you yet. Cause I, I, I thought you were still in the parking garage. I was like, "Fuck, I gotta shit." So My anxiety run was running. I was like, "These are like one, two, three, four, like five, and six then, like, new people. You, I have you no had to idea go who they are." Introduce yourself to them with all of them when I wasn't there. I was like, "Fuck." I, I was doing that thing, and I felt like a dick because they were like, "Hey, Ryan." I was like, "Yeah, that's me," and like I didn't know how to be like, "Yeah, <laughs> I'm right." Like, I don't know. I, I, Dude, they're all talking about you, like when you were at David Mustard's. Weird. I had a good time we with. We were them. talking there, like at David Mustard's. They're like, "God, that guy's so fucking funny." And we were. Jake was over at my house, and we were me and Jake and, and Ethan, uh, crank gameplays. We were chilling, and uh, and Eddie, and we were talking about Jake and I were like, "Man, like me and you just force jokes down people's throats, but Ryan just will like sneak attack them, and it's the funny that shit you said." On uh, the fucking Universal tour. Was it the Bill Burr impression? Yeah, dude. When you, we were talking about like Tom Cruise. <laughs> I don't remember what it was. It was like... Terry Cruz. Oh, yeah, yeah. Terry Cruz. There was like a sign with Terry Cruz and you did this Bill Burr impression. And it fucking killed me, dude. So fucking funny. I had a blast, Thanks, man. I'm excited to hang out with those guys more. I'm excited to do some videos with them, too. I'm glad that you finally... You and Jake for the first time. I don't know if it was... No, it couldn't have been Eddie's first time. But definitely you and Jake's first time on uh, The Mummy, which is dude, my favorite Mummy, ride at Universal. Ride. Amazing. If you are to go on any ride at Universal, if you were to only be able to go on one, it has to be the Mummy. It is unfortunately the shortest ride there, I think, but it's the no, best. The Griffin thing you ride, that's even shorter. The it's new, still fun. The, the new Harry Potter one. Oh, it's is it short? It, well, it's more of a it's more of a, like a young teen to kid coaster. Yeah, it's fun as fuck though. Yeah, uh, but yeah. kind of like Runaway Reptar at exactly. a at a Carowinds, no, or no, it's not Runaway Reptar anymore, right? Because because Paramount it. took out their shit. Yeah. Well, so no fun. more peanuts. They 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 invited us out and and we hadn't been doing much. I was having a bit of a bummer week, so it was, it was fun to just go out and hang out with the boys. And we made that stupid video on the on the Universal tram that he Gayo <laughs> Kojima retweeted for some reason and got like five hundred fifty thousand likes. I feel like uh, uh what's his name Mike Mike Wazowski Mike Wazowski from uh Monsters Inc. Because like in that tweet like it blew up so much, but like. It like pans very quickly past me. I'm like, there I am. <laughs> oh, it's the, like, the, the screenshot of you like paused. You're like, <laughs> yeah. So it's such a good like reaction picture. <sighs> anyway, guys, thank you for tuning in. Uh, this was episode 175, which means that yeah. we are uh, what six eighths of the way to 200. Shiznit, wait, 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 wait. No, dude. That's, that's shiznit my brother don't say that shit man i just did the math completely wrong on that didn't i seven eighths of the way to uh episode 200 all right pretty dope all right guys well uh thank you for uh being patient while we did our little yearly hiatus you said being impatient right i said being patient oh okay some of them were a bit impatient yeah, well you know what to those people for, can we just write this in stone for those who worry that we don't upload like it, it, like about anywhere between two to three weeks in the beginning at the start of a year just know we always take a, a little hiatus as a break, yeah. as a breather, and also to spend with family, friends, recollect ourselves, and come back. Because I don't want to feel like I'm like twenty four seven on on the on the YouTube grind. No, I, I can't because that, that drains your creativity. Just that drains you so much. Just is nice. You know? Yeah, um, we just need a little one. So and we do that throughout the year. We'll take little like couple day breaks sometimes from the channel. Uh, so so thank you, oh wonderful. Uh, overlords for allowing us to to take a breather. <laughs> no, but but uh, for the people that were patient about it, thank you. Because uh, you know, sometimes we just randomly take breaks because we need it. Otherwise, we'll get burnt out and then hate what we're doing. Yeah, and there's no it's like there's necessity. there's no point in recording or do, or like recording something when we're not in the mood. To. And other YouTubers, I know a lot of other YouTubers will force it out and like they just won't ever take a break. They have something every single day and like. Well, not only that, they'll force out recording sessions. Like um, th if there's something that I like about you and I, if we're not feeling a recording session, like if we're two episodes, if like we plan, like we're gonna record six episodes today, but two episodes in, we're just not feeling it. We'll be like, 
we're not feeling it. Let's come back to it. So I don't want to put out so shit. some like y'all y'all have noticed sometimes like we'll be really hitting a series hard and all of a sudden it'll kind of pitter patter. It's because we just we we want to be in the good recording mood when we record. If we're yeah. recording and we're not in the mood, then we then it's putting out content that's 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 not lazy. It's it's putting out content that's just not us or not yeah. like we're, we're not putting our heart into it. And the, what and you know like behind the scenes we do have pretty busy intricate lives and um some sometimes we got to take a couple days off the channel because you know shit that we're not going to talk about on the channel obviously because it's too personal comes up and it's like yeah. oh, you know we need to take a little break and uh we don't always announce if we're taking a little break but we thank do you guys it for sticking with us yeah thank you and thank hopefully you. Th like thank you to everyone who joined in 2019 if you if you uh joined the channel in 2019 welcome uh, welcome put it in the comments and everybody welcome them if you um and i'm excited for all the people that will join in 2020 me too man me too well guys thank you so much for listening uh Check out uh, a little sponsors in the description if yep. you want to get some undies or save some money online. And uh, with that note, I think it's time we uh, blow this turkey stand. With push, what? Just push the button right there. Oh, hold on. Wait, this one? Yep. Okay. <laughs>